You're listening to episode 149 of the Small and Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman. Hi and welcome to this episode of the Small and Supercharged podcast with me, Rhea. It's a solo one. And today we're going to talk about something that is going to help you to show up consistently on social media. It's going to help you to spend less time doing your social media in terms of less time thinking about what to post, posting it, going back and forward and all the things. It's going to help you be a lot more streamlined and efficient, which is going to help you to focus in and engage and engage more on the content that you put out there to help nurture those relationships. So today it's all about five ways to batch your content creation. And I really think you are going to love this one. I wanted to say just before we get into it, that um, I really do appreciate every nice share we get, every nice review that I receive on the podcast. And if you would like to do either of those things, I'd be incredibly grateful. If you go over to the podcast platform that you listen on, there'll be the option to rate and review. And it would be lovely if you would consider it because the more people that review it, the more people that rate it, the more people it's likely to get in front of. And I'd like to think that what I share here is helpful so we can help more people. So just a quick note about that. I would really appreciate it if you would consider leaving a review if you tune in. Now back to batch content creation. Why should you even bother? I think we can all agree that in order to do our best on social media, to show up consistently and to show up well, it does take time. And it can take an awful lot of time, particularly if you're not entirely sure about what you should be posting and you get to whatever time in the day you normally post or realistically 15 minutes before and you have that blind panic of, I need to put something out there. What am I going to put out there? Oh gosh. At which point you start, well, (laughs) if you're like me, you would then start scrolling through your camera roll. Damn it, nothing that I quite want to talk about. Maybe the pictures aren't quite right because they're showing different seasons um, or my hair's a different colour or (laughs) something like that. That means that the content that you're thinking about putting out isn't as relevant as you would like it to be. And then you think, oh, Christ, okay, it's fine, it's fine. I'll um, I'll think of something witty to say. I'll think of a quote. I'll think of a one-liner. I'll think of a tip. Well, I'll tell you now, if I'm under pressure to think of a a witty one-liner or a witty quote or a witty tip for a a post, the chances of me getting there are very, very slim. Again, I don't know about you, this might just be me, but if I have a bit of quiet and a bit of time, I can come up with loads, she says, arrogantly. Um, I I know I can come up with lots of great tips, tricks, quotes, Uh, things to help people. If I just have that time to think when I'm not panicked in any way thinking I've got to post in 10 minutes and I cannot think of anything, what am I going to do? If I'm in that situation, I am not doing my best work and I hate that and it will take me ages, ages and ages to think of something that is, is good enough to share, that's going to help people through my social media. It's going to help them learn something or try a new thing or find a new feature or think of something differently and help them. Because that's the, that's what I want to share on social. I don't want to share stuff just for the sake of sharing it. But I do want to make sure I'm showing up consistently and sharing stuff that matters. And I know I, know I have spent many an evening, if I've done quite a lot of scheduling <clears throat> and I just haven't I've dropped the ball on something and I sat there thinking, right, a tip Tuesday. What's a good tip that I have been applying, using, teaching, learning, sharing at the moment? And even if I've had 20 conversations in that day sharing 20 different tips, the chances of them coming to the front of my mind are very, very slim. I don't know if you feel the same. I do. However, if I sit quietly and go through it, I can think of loads. It's like, it's a bit like podcast ideas. If I'm thinking I don't have, you know, I like to do, I like to batch create my content and I've got a list of um, five podcasts, four, no, six podcast ideas um, that I'm planning to record over the next few days. Because I've thought about them, the ideas flowed really easily, what I'm going to put in them flowed really easily. 
it means that they're done when it suits me, not when I'm really up against it. It means I can get them edited in more time, which means that, lol, I know you're listening, doesn't get as cross with me about the tightness of everything. And I mean, to be fair, over the last three months with the homeschooling, it has been a bit of a challenge sometimes to fit everything in. So batching your content helps. Not only does it help you because you know you're putting out your best work because you've got that mental space to do it, but again, I know if I'm rushed, I'll have a million things going on. You know, if I'm in the house, I'll be thinking, oh, I need to be doing this or emptying this or cleaning this or sorting this or doing this in addition to thinking about what I want to think about. Whereas if I'm sat in the office, I can just do it. I can think and it will come and it will be good. So today we're going to talk about five ways you can and five things to batch in terms of content creation because it'll help you. If you can get your head around this and if you can think about how you can make it work for you, it will help. And even if you don't schedule and you like to post on the fly, which is completely fine, you do you. I always recommend scheduling, but that's completely fine. That's another podcast. I might write that down. Um, Even if you post on the fly, you will still have this bank of stuff that you can use when you want to. So the things that take longer to create the pictures when the light's not good. You have got that bank of really good things that you can pull out whenever you want and make work for you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing I want to talk about is images because as we know, social media platforms are very visual, particularly your Instagrams and your Facebooks, um, but also on other platforms like Twitter, um, LinkedIn, images matter, they stop you scrolling. And what we want to do when we create our content is we want to do something that stops somebody scrolling. And the way a lot of people do it is with imagery. Now, if you, I know I will say this, but if you can afford a professional shoot, they can absolutely be worth their weight in gold. I'd give a massive shout out to Sophie Callahan. You know I work and love so work with and love Sophie. Um, I've had a couple of shoots with Sophie, and from each of those shoots, I have got huge amounts of content. As we worked together, she very kindly gifted me both shoots, just full disclosure, but I got literally hundreds of photographs from those shoots, and ones I still use now. If you look at my Instagram, um, there are, actually the, the, the cover image for this podcast was one of Sophie's pictures that she took on the first shoot she did with me, which was in 2018. 2018, because I did 2018, 2019, 2020, we weren't allowed because of COVID, and now we're 2021. But as I said, hundreds of pictures. And if you look through my grid, if there's any of me um, wearing a white shirt with slightly shorter hair, with a highlight that go, with actually, no, quite bad roots, that was one of those. But they're the ones that I took then. And as you can see, I use those a lot. And I don't just use them once, I will use them. I mean, I've said there are. I think there's about 150-ish, I might be wrong, Um, but I I use them when what I want to talk about relates to them, Um, and having that bank of good quality images that is beautifully edited is really, really valuable. So if you can afford a shoot, and if you want to afford a shoot, I would definitely urge you to consider it. Look at the options, because you're going to get a bank of images from whatever photographer you work with, obviously make sure when you speak to them and you approach them, you're really clear about what you want. You know, you might not want any printed images, you might want all the digitals, I know that's what I did. Um, And even if you think the shoot cost is quite a lot, think about what you're gonna get for that. Think about the images you're going to get for that. If you work out the cost per image, it'll probably be really cheap. and it's great to have that there. And if they're, you know, kind of timeless things, even better. Obviously, if you're a brand, you'll want to be having your new collections in, but still, I digress. If you can afford a professional shoot, and of course, if you have a professional shoot, it's gonna be pictures of you, the person behind the brand, whereas if you're gonna do photography at home, which we're gonna talk about next, it might be things with a self-timer, which can be really good. I'm rubbish with a self-timer, but I'm improving. Selfies, flat lays, all these things. So there's a different kind of imagery. So if you can, do. But even if you can't, think about investing some time in improving your photography skills with your phone or camera if you've got a camera um, and batching that content together. 
So let's say you are a product brand and you have got different products and you want to photograph them. Absolutely, you can get them on hangers, you can get them outside, you can put them on the line, you can put them on a gate, you can get them on people, depending on the current restrictions and who you can get to help you. Absolutely. Or you can also set yourself up with a little, in inverted commas, studio at home where you can, it's a nice day, not too sunny so you don't get the shadows, you can go outside, take some pictures outside on the grass, close-ups of things, faraway shots of things, outfit ideas any of these things. Um, so that's products. And obviously for services, again, think about having a day where you tidy your desk or your office. I know, I'm laughing as I say this. I've got a lot of stuff I need to clean out of here. Um, but you've maybe got a nice picture of your computer on your desk or of you on your computer or of your diary or of your notebooks or of your pens and things that are, are, are kind of good things to have in stock, whether you use that as a standalone image or whether you use that as the background for a quote. I mean, in, in the Small and Supercharged Mastermind group, we're really lucky that each month Sophie provides a number of really beautiful stock images that people can use for free as part of Mastermind when they want to. So that's obviously one option, and I know she's also got a stock library. I feel like this is a Sophie promo, not deliberately, but <laughs> it's not deliberate. There are other stock image libraries available. There are other photographers available. I'm lucky that we were, I worked with some incredible ones in the mastermind group as well in different parts of the country. So do do your research. There are some amazing people there. But stock imagery is what we're creating and you can buy those images in or you can create them yourself. And, you know, you can apply filters, you can edit. I'm always very, very wary about both because I'm not massively competent at editing. I'll level with you. I'm not. Um... And I always get a bit worried about filters uh, because I think they can change too much. There was a case fairly recently where um, the ASA got involved in the usage of filters. And I can't remember the exact detail on that, but it was quite interesting. But I know from, from a, a consumer point of view, if I'm looking at a picture of somebody in a red jumper, let's say, and, and it's heavily filtered and the jumper has been filtered as well, the chances of that jumper being the colour I think it is when it arrives are pretty slim. And I love burgundy, I'm not a big fan of bright red. So if it's been filtered, the if it's been filtered from bright red to burgundy, I'm gonna be really cross about my purchase, aren't I? And I think with anything with colour, um, which is obviously most things, but if you're trying to sell something that's a specific colour and it's important that, that colour is shown, be really, really wary about filters. And also be very aware when you're editing you want to make sure that the product is a true likeness of the colour because otherwise it's really quite misleading and you're not going to have very happy people. So that's just something to keep in mind. But batch content, batching the content in terms of your images. Another thing as well that I do quite a lot is I'll take pictures of, um, I've got quite a few pictures of like mugs on desks with notebooks or with print offs from different things. I don't really use it on their own, but I will put a quote over. So often you'll see on Tip Tuesdays on my grid, those images are ones that I've probably taken around the office, taken in a field, taken of, of plants outside. You know, I will, when I'm walking the dog, I'll take pictures of plants, of scenes. There's a really lovely um, view at the back of the village church that I kind of sit on the bench. There's one that I put up quite a lot with a pair of boots or feet on the wall by the church. That's just the wall by my church. Well, it's not my church, it's the village's church, but I walk through it. So, you know, grass growing, fields, anything that links to your brand that is relevant, horses, feed rooms, there's so much stuff you can do that you might not think is a strong enough image as a standalone image, but it's a very strong image as the background for a quote or a tip or something else. So that's a really good use of that. I've got loads of things on my phone that when I've looked at, I'm like, ah, oh, that's a bit, uh, but I wouldn't use it as a standalone image, but it's brilliant as background. So, and that then means that it's completely unique and you own it and it's yours and you can do what you like with it. And if you pop into something like Canva, which I'm going to give a big plug for later because flipping love Canva, um, you've got your own bank of images in there. So images, get that batched. You know, be aware of the weather. If you've got the time, the weather is on your side, so you can use natural light, you can go outside, really good, and you can get a big old stock then on your phone, or you can put them onto your computer, 
and it takes a lot of the work out because especially in the winter months the light is awful it's very blue and it's dark and stuff looks really grainy really quickly and even something that should be really really good can look rubbish in the wrong light you start adding in um artificial light i've got a i want to call it a soft box it's probably not called a soft box and i've got a ring light um but the it's just it's not as good because i'm not massively competent using them i'm not too bad on the ring light don't understand the soft box really at all whatever i do with it there's more shadows so obviously that's something that you can learn but if you can use natural light it will definitely help you especially if you are not a photographer the next thing is hashtags and this isn't actually content creation per se but it will help you with your content creation and it will allow you to do it quicker by making a batch there we go I'm, I'm, we, I'm getting that word in there a batch of hashtags that you can copy and paste into the different posts now if you use scheduling software there will be a place I'm sure where you can save it I have got um, later or you know I use later and I have got a few different groups of hashtags that I will use on different things that I just click and they go there alternatively you could save it into something like notes so you know you do the work you save it into notes and it is there whenever you want it to be there it will just save you time and you can create a lot of you know a number of these different groupings that you want to use there might be some crossovers but maybe every Monday you do a motivation post so you put the time in and you research the motivational Monday Monday motivation all these hashtags that are going to help the right people find you you do that research and you you put the time in there but then they're there in your notes in later wherever you want them to be that you can you can use whenever you like so do some work and get those hashtags grouped together so they're there in little batches for your content creation and you can just pull the right one in the next thing is graphics now you can use graphics for anything you can use them for um tips is one that i do a lot of there's quotes but I'm, I'm going to cover that separately but getting your graphics batched is a really good thing and actually for quotes and graphics so i'm not going to talk about them well i'm going to talk about them separately but for graphics and for quotes i would use canva and that's spelled c-a-n-v-a dot com i love it um i'm not affiliated or connected with them in any way but i really like it it's free it's really easy to use it's basically graphic design uh, software but there's templates there's all sorts of amazing things in there <clears throat> and as i said completely free to use so what you can do is you can go into canva and you can pick a template that you're going to use for your graphics for your you know your tips and your tricks and your motivational mondays and whatever you want to do and you can either choose one of their templates or you can create your own from the ground up that you can use. Now the hardest bit is doing the template. And that's maybe a case of you want to have your logo in the corner, you want to have text overlay, you want to mess about with the um, opacity of a box you've put over it. You want to, there's so many things that you might want to do inside it. And when you look at something like Canva or I know um, a few people use um, Adobe, there's loads and loads of different ones, which is brilliant. It's completely up to you what you use, obviously. But if you create a template, you can then just duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it. And when you're in the right brain space, what I was saying earlier about when the creativity comes, get onto the notes section on your phone and just start jotting ideas down. Because that means that when you come and you sit in front of the computer, you can just get those all, all those graphics, you can do them because you know what you're going to say, you know your tip or your trick or your thought that you can just add in there. And then you can either download them as a group that you can save wherever, you can pop into your scheduling software, you can shove onto your phone, whatever you like. Um, but you've got them there. And again, it's it seems really simple and really obvious to do this. And it, it is, 
it is, but we don't. You know, I'm I'm not faultless in this. I know that this stuff works because when I do it, it's brilliant. But life gets busy and you think, well, it's going to take me an hour to do that, let's say. But the time it will save you because if you've got those ideas, you've got your template and you can just rattle through it all, it will be better and it will be done. And then you've got weeks and weeks and weeks, if not months, of specific content ready to go, which is brilliant. So graphics, get those done in advance. Think about what you want to say. Do your research. Think of things. Like if, you, if you're quoting things that you say and things that you think, when you have that thought when you're speaking to somebody, write a note. Write it down. It will honestly, it will be so invaluable for you. It really, really will. The next one is connected. It's quotes. Um, and I, again, I use Canva for this. Um, well, actually, I mean, I use a mixture. When I'm doing podcast quotes, I'll use Canva. And just like with the graphics, I will have a template that I have customised. I have um, added things in and I've got my little speech marks going and things like that. So I'll probably I'm going to change it soon. Another thing you can do as well, which I have had done, which I haven't integrated yet, is I did have a graphic designer design some bespoke um, backgrounds for me with a line around the outside, one's half red, half burgundy, half white, haven't got them all out yet, haven't decided which ones I'm using yet, but if you wanted to do that again, you could have somebody design that for you, and then you could put that into something like Canva, duplicate, 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 add the different quotes, add the different text, Bob's your uncle, so you can do that. With quotes, again, you can do that in in something like Canva, another thing I use for quotes is an app called uh, Word Swag, like swag like a burglar, 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 you know, a thief. Um, I think I paid for it, but it wouldn't have been much. And that's just really designed for quotes. It's got some nice graphic, um, nice fonts and kind of font styles, which make really nice graphics inside there. You could also use that for graphics if you wanted to. Um, you can also, there's a lot you can do there. You can import backgrounds, you can import images. I find it a bit more clunky than Canva because I always use Canva on the desktop and I always use WordSwag on my phone. But again, it's useful to have that bank of quotes and I've got them in my, I, I use later, I've got them in later. I've got a load of different quotes I can just drag and drop in when I feel like that's what I want to talk about. It's a really good way of doing that and getting a point across. So I'd get those quotes batched again, batched as well. And again, when you think about things that you say or how you phrase things or quotes, that you want to use and you want to integrate, then write them down, use the notes section, send yourself a voice note, send yourself an email, I've done that more than once, um, with what you want to talk about because it's gonna be really, really valuable for you. And the last thing is video content. If you can batch your video content together, your life will be made easier. When I do um, reels, I try and do a few at a time. I don't try and do too many because it is tiring. Like it does get quite tiring if you're on camera all the time, if you're talking all the time, it can get really tiring. So don't think, right, I am gonna film for eight hours and I'm gonna be sparkling and amazing at the end. You won't be, you'll be exhausted at the end. But if you can say, I'm gonna do four reels, five reels, I know they're only 15 to 30 seconds long, but they take it out of you with the thinking. But you've, you know, you've made sure you're feeling happy about what you're wearing. You've made sure you're happy about how you look. You know, you've brushed your hair or you've put makeup on or whatever. The light's good. It just means, again, that you don't have to think, oh, no, I want to post a reel today. Oh, no, I want to post a video today. Oh, I want to do this today. You've already got it done. And if it's a case that you need to add your caption, you need to add any tags or anything like that, at least the, the bulk of it's done. And I know from my point of view at least I can add captions I can add tags I can do things like this when it's when the weather's rubbish when it's raining when it's dark but I can't film a good video when it's dark and I can't film a good video when the light's rubbish or when it's raining because of the sound so if I can choose those windows that I can use to create the content then I can it just takes the pressure off again because I don't have to be thinking, I really need to do it this week, I really need to do it today, I really need to do it today, it doesn't matter what, what the light's like, or it doesn't matter what the sound's like, I've just got to do it. I'm not going to be producing my best work from that, and that will annoy me. Whereas if I can set that time aside, I can get a load done in one go, which will mean my head's in the right space, I've done a bit of planning, so I'm not going to talk about, 
but it just means that you can be so much more effective in that time because you're just focused on that one thing. You know, you're recording a series of videos on your phone that you've propped up on your tripod and you're cracking on. You've got the light sorted, you know, you're not thirsty, you're not gonna have any phone calls, you've got your everything on, don't disturb, it's quiet, do it. Because then when your hair's wild or you've got a sore throat or there's sound in the background or someone's decided to do roadworks in front of your house and you can't shut them up, you don't have to stress about it. You really don't because you've already done it. So they, there are five ways to batch content creation. We've got images and obviously we've talked about professional or your own images. We have got hashtags doing the work there and putting those into little groups so you can just add those into your batch content. We've talked about making graphics and things like Canva, We've talked about quotes on Canva forward slash word swag forward slash there are loads of other ones available, whatever you like, just something where you can duplicate and you can do a load in one go that you can then save somewhere safe. And we've also talked about batching video content, whether that's longer form, um, I mean, again, if you're doing an hour's video, you're going to be a bit tired by the end. But if you're doing, you know, tip videos, uh, short form like reels or TikToks or things like that, that you can do together, it will help you. You don't have to post them all at the time. Obviously, you know, you can save them as draft or you can just save them on your phone or you can just do a short video. You know what you're going to use it for. It's all going to help you. And that's what this is all about. So thank you so much for listening today. I always appreciate your time, as you know. If you'd like to get more information about how I can help you with your social media, your PR, your marketing, and getting your brand out there, please do pop over to my website, riafreemanpr.co.uk, and have a look at the Small and Supercharged Mastermind tab. It's the most incredible group, incredible community. We have monthly masterclasses for mindset, for marketing, weekly lives, social media critique a month, free stock imagery, so much jam-packed into there, and the most incredible community too. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it, and we'll catch up really, really soon. Take care.